stuff, didn't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah, I really they weren't exactly them. attacking a lot either. Let's hear from the Manchester United captain, Harry Maguire, is with Kelly Summers. Harry, congratulations. It was a hard fought win. What are your thoughts on the performance? I thought the performance was good. Um, I felt like we could have been a little bit more clinical and um, we dominated the game, especially the first half. We should have come in at half time. I felt like they had a little spell just after half time, but we dealt with that a lot better than what we did on at the weekend against Everton for sure. So, no, it was good. We dug in. I felt like we got the, the win that we deserved in the end and obviously in the end, that's what we came in to do. Yeah, what does that say about the mentality of this team after what happened on Sunday, especially? Yeah, well, Sunday was tough. Um, very uh, Saturday night, sorry, it was it was very tough. Um, we were so disappointed, obviously, to concede in the last kick, and we felt like we deserved the, the points. And um, the way that we conceded as well, it was disappointing. So, no, it was a great spirit, great mentality to, to come back, perform, um, get our heads back up. And we know it's a long season. Uh, there's games every three days, so it's the best thing when you when you when you're disappointed and you don't win a game of football to have a game in two three days time. It's perfect. So. Tonight was perfect, uh, the, the game's come so soon and the lads put on a good, good performance and a good win and like I said, it's, it's important to go through. Well, congratulations, you are the man of the match. Thank you, thank you. Currently second in the Premier League quarterfinals of um, the FA Cup, um, progress? Yeah, progress. Uh, they got to four semi-finals, I think it is, with uh, with Oli. They need to uh, to get to a final now and win a uh, win a tournament. But that was the poor touch there from from Rice. But just look at the way Man United win the ball and then commit men forward, and especially uh, McTominay, who started actually in his uh, in his own box and then finds himself in the opposite box. And it was a wonderful finish. I mean, the touch from Rashford because it's so perfect in his path. He doesn't have to break stride, and the keeper's got no chance to set himself. And before he knows it, it's in the back of the net. He made a difference. Yeah, he did. Um, substitutes and um, obviously Ben Johnson came in. I thought he'd done pretty well, but in the main, it didn't really make an impact. I thought Ben Rama and Lanzini maybe could have, but didn't bring him on okay. in time. Two or three minutes of the of the half, have they had that uh, the the uh, the passing move? Yeah, Man United half, but no, there's no way. This hasn't been enough goal mouth activity. We just saw the West Ham players walking off the pitch there, Ian. That's yeah. pretty much the formation they played most <laughs> that first half, wasn't it? Yeah, but like you know, it's going to be tough because, like Al said, there um, they've not got any way of actually retaining the ball and bringing themselves up the pitch a bit more, getting runners off of Yarmolenko. Um, so it's it's very tough for them at the moment. And Man United, with the amount of bodies at the back, it's very difficult to get any space in there. And the blocks, have, which we have to say from West Ham, they've been blocking, defending yeah. pretty well. But other than that, it's um, yeah. you know, last. I think the last couple of minutes, West Ham got into it a bit more. Aaron Cresswell has been getting in positions where, if they found him, he could whip it in, but they've just not been looking for him yeah. some of the times. Um, we've got to look a bit to find a couple of chances, but uh, United went closest. Obviously, the brilliant save from Fabianski kept Lindelof out. Yes, um, good ball in. He tacks the ball well. Lindelof finds himself, what is it, eight or nine yards out, and that is a wonderful save. He gets down low. Little deflection, oh, I think it is, isn't it? We, we thought it uh, hit the post originally, but it was a magnificent save. Tellez has looked a threat. Yeah, he's been their best player, I think. Certainly uh, going forward, he's given them options down that left-hand side, got into some decent positions and some good balls into the uh, into the box. Yeah, it's important for players like Tellez when they come in, yeah. um, especially as Luke Shaw, as we, we highlighted pre-kick-off, mm. um, it's important that they make an impact, and he has, if anyone has, he has. Yeah, he has, and it's funny because I was reading about him and Luke Shaw, and they kind of, like, push each other on. Um, you could see that they got a similar kind of, the way they play, it's very similar, they get forward and they put quality balls into the box. I just think that it's still a bit too slow and pedestrian at Man United up front. Another player getting an opportunity that he's, he's, he's not really got himself into the game. It's not easy the way West no. Ham are playing, that's for sure. But Donny van der Beek, um, as, as we know, Bruno Fernandes is always in there. What is, what, what's happened, Gary, is he's, because of the numbers back there in, in West Ham, the four and then the, uh, the five in the midfield, there's no space in there. He was trying to find these little pockets in between the back four and the midfield, but there isn't any. And what, what's, what he's tending to, uh, to do is he's tending to go and stand up on the, uh, against the back line rather than in those little, little pockets. And he's found it difficult. He hasn't moved enough. Or they haven't been enough options from, uh, from Man United to, uh, to get him on the ball. There's a little bit of sympathy for him, uh, for, for, from us because there's, there's just actually no space in there. And what he's, what he's doing is, as I said, he's going up and doing that. And he's going up and standing up there and there's, there's just no space in front. He's not really looking to, uh, to, to get him behind. And because of that, he's then coming a little bit deeper. He finds himself in the fullback position here just to try and get yeah. uh, touches on what the ball do, and influence think, the, uh, and influence the ball. Well, he's, he's, he's got to try and find those spaces in the pocket 
pockets. There, there are one or two spaces. There's not many, but there are in there, and he's got to try and get in there, get on that ball and, and, and turn and, and try and get at that back four. As you said, Ian, West Ham have offered very little going forward. No, they have enough. To be honest, not much. Uh, like, till the last couple of minutes, they see Chris, well, getting the ball in. But when West Ham get it, there's not a lot of options. I think that when you look at this situation here, because West Ham must know at some stage they're going to have some possession. There's nothing really on for, for Cresswell here. There's, there's, there's nothing going on, no one going long, no one really coming short. And then all of a sudden it just... This happened so many times. Look at this situation. you actually got three West Ham players over in, the, in that area and they're actually killing their own space. You want people to come out, make open the space up a little bit, give him some space on the ball to move. And then in the end, again, it's just goes to Man United and Man United just go from there. I think that this is what they should have done a lot more because Cresswell's been offering this for, for all the game and he's been quite frustrating not getting it. Again, nothing from the front man. In the, he runs offside, in fact, Yarmolenko, but you can see the two fellas on the left here, um, Fornals and Cresswell, very frustrated. And then when you do want the forward to come to you so you can retain a possession, he actually on this occasion runs away. So, you know, it's, it seems like it's not quite working and I have to, I, I, he must, he's got to do something about that. Yeah. We've been starved of too much excitement in that first half, so we've jumped on something. We've jumped on a bit of skill uh, from Mason yes. Greenwood that got us excited, warmed us up a fraction. Yeah, I wasn't happy because he done Watch this. It. Look, great skills. Whoa. That's, that's great skill. <laughs> Highlight the first half, I'd yeah. say. Yeah. Your mate won't thank you for showing that. Noble, will he? No, but the thing about it is, like... No, no, I think that this was luck. You know, it's against, it's against my man, Nobs. <laughs> That's brilliant skill, man. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, I hasten to add that Mark Noble was only your man because he did actually wave to you. Mark Noble Obviously, was it was after we'd handed to the commentary <laughs> team, but we did manage to get look, it. Look. No, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Nice oh dear. one, Nobes. <laughs> Mane the last time, Nobes this time. Men <laughs> of the people. It's not, it's not bad, is it? <laughs> I like the first half. Uh, it will be a better second half. Um,